Hey, what's up everyone? It's Chip here and today we're going to go through uh, a tutorial on creating this Veronwa chair, which is a fractal pattern chair. Uh, it's for Moment of Inspiration, MOI, and it's based on a new plugin, a uh, Veronwa plugin by Max Murnoff, a real exciting plugin. Uh, and uh, we'll have to jump in and out of some uh, this program, MOI, as well as Illustrator, to, to get this final, final finish done. So the first thing we'll start off with is we'll We'll create kind of a little profile, very simple little profile of a chair. Uh, let's, uh, you know, basically we're going to create the chair first, uh, the chair service first, and then we'll use flow to actually uh, uh, flow the Verano pattern on top of it. So here we have, uh, fill it, we're filling this, and actually I'm using a G2 blend because I want to get rid of the corner points on this chair so I can continue to massage it later. So I'm, I'm trying to build a kind of a sculpturing system so I'm, I'm just missing everything on here's corner points except for the two endpoints okay so uh, once I get that done what we'll do is uh, we'll go ahead and mirror uh, I'm sorry we'll go ahead and uh, uh, create a, a profile to either side of this so we'll drag one over and then mirror that one and when we mirror that uh, of course because we have history turned on it's going to when we move this one on the right the one on the left will automatically move Move with us. So that's, that looks about right for our chair. So let's go ahead and show all points and uh, let's do a loft and set the style to loose and uh, and then we can start dragging these points around and we can create um, you know uh, kind of a nice shape so you know you have to bear with me here a little bit as I try and you know continue to you know, grab these points and tweak it and move move the shape up and down so um, uh, you'll see that uh, uh, it's a lot of trial and error and playing around and looking at uh, uh, kind of looking at the different views trying to get the shape exactly right so uh, it's one of the things that um, uh, takes a little time and you're bending the actual seat back there a little bit uh, and one of the things that uh, uh, we need to save this let's go ahead and save the file one of the things that you find out is that uh, uh, that while this is a great creates a great surface, uh, we're going to have to refactor the surface. Right now, I'm looking at different lightings, so I can look at different lightings to try and see if there's any kind of weird creases or anything in the, in the chair that are going to create a problem. So, um, once I've got all this done, I'm going to take uh, I'm going to delete that surface. I'm going to take these and I'm going to actually these these splines and I'm going to use a plugin uh, that's called. Uh, yeah, there it is. There's the plugin. So I basically, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not. I'm rebuilding these curves first. I apologize. It's going a little fast here. So yeah, so I'm rebuilding the curves with uh, 15 points. So you can see now it's got 15 points. And the reason for that is we want kind of a consistent, uh, uh, consistent distance between the points as we start to for for the flow command. So now that I've rebuilt it, you can look at this and you can see that. Yeah, it's kind of. It doesn't look. It looks a little more funky than it did before. So I'm going to have to actually tweak some of these points because it's not as nice as it was before. Um, and the challenge here is just to uh, continue to play with this and get it to where I've got. I, I feel like it's right. But but uh, you might ask, why didn't I do that at the beginning? And the reason why is that uh, uh, is that I wanted to get the, the basic shape pure as pure as possible. Here I'm using some of the tools like that, to line up some of the vertices and I'm playing with it a lot. Uh, I'll also, as I said, I'll turn on different lighting uh, and the different lighting can help me uh, see where there's some kind of weird wrinkles. You can kind of see there's one there on the inside of the left. I'm trying to work on getting that out of there. Um, anyway, so this will uh, go on for another uh, about 30 or 40 seconds here uh, as I try and continue to uh, get the wrinkles out of this uh, particular chair. So now that I'm uh, getting close to getting it done, uh, so up there's, I'm using the chrome texture. And you can see there are some real kind of interesting sh shapes uh, and wrinkles. So that's what I'm, what I'm doing is I'm again tweaking some of that. Uh, but once, once I get this done, uh, this particular shape done, then that's the shape that we're going to want to flow our final uh, typology our, our Voronoi lattice typology onto it. So that's why we're paying so much attention to getting it uh, exactly right. So I'm getting pretty close now, I think. Uh, and uh, uh, once we get this done, 
there we go. Just a couple, couple more small tweaks. Um, and uh, so once we get this done, then we then we going to select these. We're going to uh, basically unwrap the curves. So I've taken that and we've unwrapped the curves. Now we have those curves now are all planar. Unwrap curve is a plugin uh, that you can get on the MOI forum. So I'm going to take these and I'm going to do a loft between these three curves. Uh, and I want loft styles is normal, not uh, loose, but normal. And then I'm going to take and uh, take the other three curves. Uh, and if I move them, the actual surface will come with them. So, uh, uh, actually, no, that's not really what I want to do. I want to actually just leave those in, in the middle because I know for a fact that we're going to end up uh, using the Vornoir plugin and it's going to be referencing that size. So, let's go ahead and select these curves for the chair. And if we move these, the actual surface will come with it. We don't have to select the surface because they're still bound. So, there we have it. So, now I've got that done. Uh, and now I just need to uh, straighten up. So basically what I've done is I've unwrapped that, that surface. You can kind of see that I've, I've unwrapped that, uh, that chair surface now uh, and it's, and it's on, the, on the ground. I'm going to want to make it square because I know that my uh, Vernois pattern is going to be rectangular. So I'll come up here and grab those points there. Actually select them all and click on the uh, bottom there. There you go. There you go. Snap in place. Do the same. Click on top. Snap in place. Oops. There we go. Good. Okay, so now we're ready to, uh, uh, now we're all ready to use the Vernois plugin. So I'll go back into my external scripts button down here. There it is. Uh, oops. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, not there. There, right. Okay. Okay, so here's our Vernois program. And oh, I had to detect. What I was doing earlier was I was checking the size for that rectangle. So I, can, I know it was 28 by 108. So I've gone ahead and plugged those dimensions into the, into the Vernois diagram, uh, the plugin. Now I'm going to add some random points. And so I did this a couple times, but not too many, because I'm going to actually manually move from here on out. I'm going to manually start adding my own points. And so this is a process that takes a little while, but uh, it's important because what you're really looking to do is making sure that you don't get points lying on top of each other, too close to each other, because later on you're going to have trouble chamfering or filleting any surfaces that are near that. So what you're trying to do here is, you know, basically create a little more density in the Vornois pattern and while also trying to keep all these points from getting too close to each other. So we'll move through this uh, and you'll see that <clears throat> it takes a little time to get all the way through that. but. Uh, uh, and here I am, I'm adding, again, I'm adding more density. And this isn't the last time I'm going to have a chance to actually uh, control uh, this, this, this uh, pattern. But it's really a good time now to try and get it right. So it's worth taking your time in here and trying to make sure that you get, you know, get close. What I'm doing right now is I'm kind of looking for, I'm looking for things that are too close to each other. And I'm also looking for... Uh, uh, some bigger areas that need to be subdivided because if I don't, if I have too big areas, it's just going to look kind of weird, I think. So I'm just continuing to do that. I want to make sure my corners are good because corners are where the eye ends up landing when you're looking at something. So I want to make sure that the, the corners are, are decent uh, pieces, decent uh, Vernois fractal pieces. I can already see I've got a couple points here that are uh, that I still need to fix, but. But we'll have a chance to fix those later. So we're getting pretty close to um, uh, to finishing uh, this part of it. Um, I ought to mention also that uh, that we're going to end up using Illustrator to help build our paths. Uh, or, 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 so we're going to take this file and bring it into Illustrator. So you're going to want to actually set up a, a shortcut uh, in your key in your keyboard commands for outputting to Illustrator or outputting a PDF. If you don't have Illustrator, you can probably do the same thing in the free application Inkscape. So here's our, here's, here it is. I'm going to, I'm going to go into, I'm gonna, I'll call this, I'll, I'll, I'll name this and I'll go into my, uh, my, uh, oh, actually before I do that, let's go ahead and now I'm looking for little close points, points that are too close to each other like that right there. That's not good. And I'm going to have a problem with that. So I just move these around a little bit to make sure that they're not too close. 
and oh, there's another one right there, so I can start to see. Um, there, here we go. Yeah, I'm start to see if I can just get these a little bit. Uh, I was gonna I, actually. This is interesting. I put one in here, and I thought it'd be good, but then I started looking at it. It doesn't look right, does it? So I just deleted it. I left, I left it out. I, uh, you can't really create your own vernois. <laughs> it turns out there's got to be uh, there's there's a, there's a rhyme to the reason. So here I'm again doing the same thing. Gonna, gonna delete one. And I really came to the conclusion that no, I'm better off just just uh, maintain just moving the, the the points around. So we're getting pretty close now. We've got a. We're, we're, I'm kind of walking through this whole thing, trying to make sure that uh, I've got it all. Covered. And it looks like I do. I've got every all the points where I want to. So now I just select all, and I'm going my option key, and you'll look and see this this uh, command shift I. I've got it set at uh, or shift command I. Right is that's that's the actual script. So I've done that. Command shift I. Uh, Projector views the top view. Scales fit the page. Say OK. And I'm gonna switch to uh, Illustrator. And here I am just. Dragging the file up in Illustrator, and the first thing I do is I select everything, and I'm going to just start jacking with the point size of the strokes. These are lines, so I'm just making those lines thicker. Okay, so and then I'm going to go into this path, and I'm going to say outline the strokes. So now we basically turn this, the, 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 we've created, uh, it's kind of like doing an offset in, in MOE. So I've got an offset there. So now I've got this. Now the next thing, uh, I've gone ahead and on Pathfinder, I've uh, uh, let's see, uh, merged everything. So when you when you go into Pathfinder and you merge things, uh, it'll take all those lines and uh, all those shapes and, and make them all into one kind of one surface, if you will. Uh, <clears throat> so this is this is ungrouped. So watch. Uh, um, this is this is ungrouped. So what I need to do is I'll select all these and hit that merge button, that far left one. Now it's grouped. Now I go into Stylize round corners and I can hit the preview button here and you'll start to see what's going on when I add the round corners here so that's really cool because I'm creating this really neat little uh, surface that I'm going to be able to pull directly back into uh, uh, MOE so all I need to do once I get it to where I want I go under uh, I just copy it switch back to MOE and uh, hide this and paste, and that's our uh, there's there's our our outlines right there. So I'm gonna call that my from Illustrator. These are these are curves from Illustrator. So uh, so now uh, you know I'm sure you know that uh, uh, next thing to do is just to basically size this so it matches that that plane uh, the the plane that we, we created from uh, the chair profile. So I'm gonna just move this to the corner there. And I'm going to take this and move it up. Here it is. And take this and move it up. And then I'm going to uh, have to, uh, I was going to, now I want to make it a little bit smaller so it'll be easy for me to, you know, so, so it goes just a little bit inside of this path. But it turns out uh, I got that exactly right. Now I've got my path. Now I'm just going to extrude it. I'm going to extrude it one. So now you'll see that I'll hide that. And now you see there's my Verona solid. So, uh, and that's the object, right? So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to take the top surface and I'm going to chamfer it, point 0.1. And you know, it doesn't get the whole thing. Kind of weird, but it doesn't. So I didn't get the outside, but I'm going to take the outside. I'm going to make it, fill it uh, at point uh, 0.15. And then I have to do the bottom one also fill up that at 0.15. And now I'm really going to have to walk through and uh, actually let's get the bottom uh, chamfered correctly. There it is. And I said I'm going to have to walk through now and, and get the holes that it didn't get. I don't know why Moe missed some of these holes, but uh, I'll go ahead and add the chamfers there. Notice we're still solid. So I just find, find any more places where it doesn't have a chamfer on it and, uh, uh, and clean it up. Interesting enough, on the bottom it did it just did fine. Got them all on the bottom for some reason. So not sure why that happened, but anyway, we're just fixing up ourselves. Look at it, still solid. So now we have 
a great uh, our, our bane saw. Now I'm going to put some grooves in here. So I'm going to select this top. I'm going to cop, yep, copy it and paste it, and then select the uh, edge and select all edges and do an offset of that. Um, uh, and you can see I'm using what 0.16. It's probably a good number right there. So I've done a, I've built an offset path on that. So I delete that. So there's my offset path, uh, and it's created a whole bunch of these little guys. And uh, so what I'm trying to do is I want to actually I'm going to cut some grooves into the top of my Veronoa solid. So <clears throat> take this, extrude it any dimension doesn't really matter. I show my solid up, zoom in on it, and uh, let's make it invisible. Let's drag. Select all these, drag it down a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. So then uh, we'll just do a Boolean difference quickly and let that thing uh, cut out. Uh, and there we have, there's our Boolean difference. You see we've cut that out kind of nicely. So uh, we've got our, our part pretty much ready now. Um, uh, the next thing to do is we're just going to have to use the flow command. So uh, before we do the flow command, I want to understand exactly how it's going to flow. And I'm not going to, I know it takes a long time to flow that Veronoa lattice work. So I'm going to create, I'm just going to create a, a, a rectangular solid. And I'll, uh, I'll give it some radius corners. Uh, so I'm actually trying to make it a little smaller. And of course, it never works right. So I need to go and just. Uh, use the scale tool for this. So, there we go. Boom. A little bit smaller there. Again, I'm doing that because I can touch that. I can get access to that other, other uh, surface below it a little bit. And I select, uh, select it all. I'm going to give it some radiuses. No, too much. There you go. So we have a little radius surface. Let's make it orange. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to create, uh, here we go, uh, I'm going to create a hole in this one end so I know, I'm, or actually I centered it on the, on the, I centered it on that, the flow, the basic flow, uh, the beginning flow part, not the target, but the, 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 the flat plane. And I'm going to draw a little, uh, cylinder and subtract it. So now I know that's the head. Think about that's the head area. I want to make sure that when I flow it. I can I can see the result. I'll know that, that that's at the top. That's what I want. So let's uh, select our object as it's going to flow, and we set the base curve. So we're going to set on the the top left of that, more on the left than on the top, and then boom, you can see it flowed really fast, and it's exactly exactly what we want. So let's clear that out, and let's show my lattice work now. And uh, what we'll do now is again exactly the same thing. We select the, the lattice work, the Broadwell lattice work. We'll go into uh, flow, uh, or, or we'll select the, uh, the surfaces and the target surface, and uh, and we'll let it render. This took 45 seconds in, uh, in real time, so that's about how long it took to get that done. And let's name our chair, and let's hide everything else, and show the chair, and really, uh, as you can see, that's uh, pretty nifty, uh, and it's uh, not only nifty, but it's a solid. That means it'll 3D print, and uh, it's uh, I can look at it in some different materials. That's an aluminum kind of aluminum material. Uh, I've turned the wires off, uh, but uh, anyway, yeah, Max, great job on this on this tool. I really like it. Uh, let's look at uh, Chrome. There's, that's what we're going to render it as Chrome anyway. So, hope you enjoy. Uh, hope you enjoy the tutorial, and uh, uh, and you know, you can find all these plugins, of course, on the forum uh, out at Moi. So, uh, thanks for watching, and have a great day. See you. Bye.